why are trees so freaking hard? Don't worry, on this canvas right here, I'm gonna show you how to take your crappy looking triangle trees and turn them into beautiful looking evergreen trees. So let's go. Hey all, Wild here coming at you to make sure that you become bigger and better with your creative adventure. First time here, need a little inspiration or hand holding? Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tick that bell so you know when my videos go live for you. Real quick, before we begin, this video is more or less gonna be about the confidence of building your tools and skills to make your trees look less crappy. I'm gonna do a video on how to make the perfect tree as you go forward, but I wanna instill in you the confidence and the correct ways to get your mind and hand to work as you go through your canvas. So with that said, at the end of this video is the best tip I can give you on how to make perfect trees that I want you to do. So stick around to the end. That my friends is what we call a tease. All right, enough of my jibber jabbering. Let me get you the skills you need to dominate some trees. We're gonna need to start off with some tools for the trees. We're gonna use a nice big fan brush. I recommend using the Bob Ross number no. six fan brush. It's nice and wide and also it has some soft bristles on it that allow for bending, which is key as we go forward with our tutorial here. The colors we're gonna be using will be sap green, a little bit of Prussian blue, Van Dyke Brown and Cadmium Yellow, along with the liquid white base that we already have on. And if you have trouble making sti uh, colors stick, we also can introduce a little bit of liquid white on top. So what I have here on my palette is a mixture of sap green, a little bit of Prussian blue, and Van Dyke Brown. And we're just going for a very dark evergreen color. And this is gonna help you stand out your trees when we put the highlight on it because it's gonna give it contrast to make it stand out. Now with a soft number six fan brush here, make sure we coat our fan brush nice and evenly across all the bristles. Get the front and the back and we want a lot of paint on here. The more paint is actually better for any beginner. Wiggle your brush through will help push the paint to the very end of the tips. Now, when you approach your canvas, you actually wanna come straight at it and give yourself a nice guideline. And so all we're gonna do is go straight down with our paint, you don't have to push hard, and give us a nice little basic trunk line that we can follow as we put the shape of our tree in here. Now, when it comes to doing a tree, you essentially wanna do one of two motions or a mixture of both. You wanna come in and start to either do a zigzag like this, or you wanna go down and out and then back to center, down and out, and repeat the process over and over. And these two ways are the best way to get your basic shape as you go forward. Take your fan brush and come right at your tree and turn 90 degrees and slightly tilt up while dropping your elbow. This will expose the point of the brush and this can be the very top of our pine tree where the bristles start to grow. Just simply tap and we start right there. Don't feel like you have to fill the entire pine tree. There will be gaps. So let's slowly start to go down and expand as we go out by slowly tapping in with a zigzag or a down and out motion. And you wanna put a little more pressure as you go. And you see each time I go down and out, it creates a nice little offset branch. Now usually by this point right here, people run out of paint on their paintbrush. Don't be afraid to go back and reapplicate more paint onto your bristles here so that way you can get that nice bold color. You can also flip your brush to the other side if you need. So let's continue as we go down here. And I'm just gonna zigzag down and out, hit a few more sides, push a little harder in some spots so that way I get a nice thick looking tree. Now the biggest mistake a lot of people make is it'll be more or less just straight down and there may be some gaps. Don't be afraid to go back up and fill in where you think the tree could use a little more space in here and also a few more branches. Let's put another tree over here so you can practice again. One more time, we're just gonna put our simple little line. Doesn't even have to be straight. It's just a guideline for us to follow. Let's put a little dollop and start to slowly push down and out. Let the bristles do a lot of the work here to see how well you can get everything to more or less flare as you push all the way in to the canvas here. Let's do one more over here. We'll do a bigger one.
And as you can see, as we did each tree, they progressively get better because you work on the motions of how they go. See my first tree, not so good. Second tree, a little bit better. Third tree, the best. So now that we got our trees in here, let's add some trunks. Take just your palette knife and from the middle to the top, find the center with just the bottom of the blade, then rest the rest of the blade on there and slightly just go up to give it a nice little point. Again, just go in with the base, then go flat and go straight up. Trees generally like to grow straight up because they're following the sun, so try to make it as best as you can. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This will also help fix any of the blobs that you may had at the top. Don't worry about the bottom because we're gonna fix that right now. Take some of your Van Dyke Brown and pull it flat. It's okay if it's got some green in it, that'll help add to the color there. Pull it nice and flat and we're gonna take a small little roll. Now, it's easier to go upside down with the blade and tap down, but if it's easier for you to do it on this side, that's fine. Try to follow down in a straight line and you do not have to put an entire trunk in. You can leave gaps again. So let me show you on this side from this perspective so hopefully the camera can see it. And just add little lines in here. Do the same thing here. And let me do upside down over here, probably blocking the camera, but it's actually easier for me. So you can see how we've got some sparse parts with our trunk coming through. Nice little thin one and a nice thick one that we can add on here. Now we get to make our tree pop and blend in our trunk by adding highlights. Most people have just a problem getting the yellow to stick on top of that. So I recommend adding just a few drops of liquid white to make this a little bit of a fattier paint so it'll stick on top of this firmer paint. With a pretty clean fan brush, it's okay if it's still got a little bit of this green color on here. Go through our nice fatty cadmium yellow color we just made. Now you don't need to get this too full here. You can actually pull it a little bit thin because we can always go back and add more details on top. Now when it comes to highlights, think about where your sun is coming through. Let's just say we had a sun up here that's shining down and across to highlight the right side of our trees. So we want more highlight on our right side than we do on our left side. When it comes to adding highlights, it's the same process. Go in, turn, dip your elbow a little bit and use more or less the corner of the fan brush and allow the bristles to do the work. The first time you dab on, it's gonna be a really strong color. So only push just very lightly as we start to get a lot of this yellow. Don't be afraid to go over that trunk either because that will help blend it into the background of the tree because there will be highlights and dark spots all the way across our tree here. Let's keep going across. I'm just using a very light tap and letting more or less the corner of the brush. If things get too contaminated, it's okay. Flip the paintbrush over and use the other side of the paint. If you get bright hot spots like that, that's okay. Maybe the sun just hit there a little bit more to give it a little bit of detail. The highlight is to make it look like certain parts have highlights and also branches are sticking out at certain locations there. Now you can see our trees have a lot more details because of the highlight and the trunk and everything working with it. Now, if you don't like your highlights that you put on or any shape of the tree and the way it's flowing, you can still fix a lot of this by taking a clean fan brush and a spare paper towel, work out all of that paint and use just the upper corners of the bristles and lightly blend just the bottom portion of the highlight. Go ahead and leave the top, be that specular highlight. And what this is gonna do is that Green is gonna blend in with the bottom portion of our green and start to make all these multitude of colors and you get to play around and see how you want this all to fade. Again, don't be afraid to go into your trunk and have that brown get in there. Remember, brown is a color of a tree, so you can have it be in there. Plus it's gonna break up that trunk and make it look more natural. If you really wanna add an extra zing to your trees, you can take a little bit of liquid white and just add it at the very end tips of your painting. And wherever the sun is really striking down, you can just add a little bit of white that really will give it a little more of a pop. Now this only takes a very light touch here and it'll fade in fast to the green because the green will absorb it. But this is just a little extra detail. You may not even see this show up on camera, but trust me, when you paint it, you will see all the extra little details just catch and kiss the tree. When you start feeling comfortable with trees, you can start laying land and having a lot more fun with the way that you want trees to be. And that's what makes trees really fun is you get to do all these little different things there. They're gonna make them stand out and look oh so pretty. Alrighty, time to fulfill that tease I talked about. Now that I gave you all the skills and tools and confidence that you need to go along with doing trees, 
What's the best way to get better and better with them? Well, it's actually easy. It's practicing with something that you probably already have at your house or gets delivered all that time. And that's just a normal Amazon box. What I want you to do is just go ahead and cut off a side and gesso it and put it up on your easel. You may need a backing like a piece of wood and from left to right or right to left, depending on your hand and the way that it flows, practice doing trees over and over and over. Try to do about 10 trees, and I guarantee you, when you start doing your first to third, they're gonna look like crap. When you do your fourth to sixth, slightly better. And as you go from the seventh and on, everything slowly starts to click. And the reason I want you to do this is because it's kind of like basketball. You're not gonna be good at shooting free throws if you only do one or two shots and call it a day. And that's what a lot of people do when they paint trees in their painting. They do one or two trees and it looks like crap and then they're done. And they don't get better with it because they're not gonna try another painting for maybe another week or another month and you've lost all the skills by then. I want you to practice and practice till the muscle memory is there and you've built the skills in. Trust me, this is the best tip you can do going forward as a beginner painting. I guarantee you from your first tree to your 10th tree, it's gonna look phenomenally better. You're gonna love it. Now I know this video was more or less just a quick tip to get you up and running and instill that confidence and hopefully I did. And a lot of people struggle with painting. And trees shouldn't be that much of a struggle anymore thanks to this video. Now, if you still struggle with certain things, perhaps mountains got you covered there, peeps. I'm gonna put a video over here to the side that's gonna show you how to become a mountain master by showing you the common mistakes that you make. Check that video right after the end of this video. And thank you again for watching. I appreciate it so much. And I will see all of you beautiful people in the next video coming up real soon. Take care, stay safe, and of course, peace.